Welcome to Top Shelf Music News, Quarantine Edition, Volume 2, The Electric Boogaloo. I'm your host, Matt Cook. And I'm Christy Rose, yeah. Where the hell are you now, Christy? Oh, what they said, isolate, don't you know? So I went to the most desolate spot I could think of, none of it Canada, yeah. Between the murder codes and the murder hornets and the conflicting government action, I just wanted none of it, yeah. Okay, first off, I believe it's pronounced Nunavut, Canada. Oh, yeah? Well, you probably just couldn't understand what I was saying because I was talking all Canadian, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Don't you know? That that accent is Minnesotan. You you know, never just... Just enjoy the summer temperatures. Oh, you betcha. You know, it's negative below Celsius today here to beat the COVID. The polar bears have been asked to wear face masks at the retail stores, though. Mm Mm-hmm. You betcha. In other more accurate world news, a lot has happened in the music industry since the worldwide shutdown leading a lot of artists to raise funds via live stream. The champ among them, Post Malone, raised $800,000 for COVID relief in one day, then made another $4 million playing Nirvana covers in his living room. The heavily faced tattooed rapper now wants to just give a million away to let his fans spend it for him. And nothing says you have too much money like letting other people spend it for you. From fans to artists, back to fans. Spend away, but we're spending in circles. On top of COVID-19 relief, Our Planet was the recipient of a large payout from an unlikely source, comedy rapper Lil Dicky. Ever since his Earth single hit digital outlets last year, a man named after his penis has raised over $800,000 for global warming initiatives. Meanwhile, in Congress, a man named after outplaying his opponent is working diligently to undo it all. And just when we're feeling the most broke, here comes Kanye West bitching at Forbes billionaires list, saying that he was excluded. They quickly remeasured his worth, found $1.3 billion, and offered their sincerest apologies. West, of course, retorted that they missed a whole lot and that his worth was $3.3 billion because no one there knows how to count. This all from a man who just a few years ago hit up Mark Zuckerberg for a billion-dollar investment in the greatest artist of all time. Perhaps the greatest accountant of all time? Tantrums abound on social media as rapper 50 Cent bashes an Australian wall artist for painting him on buildings in an unusual light. So far, the wall artist has unveiled 50 Cent as United States Vice President, or 50 Pence, pop star Taylor Swift, or Swifty Cent, Post Malone, and more. But he's such a cute 45th president. While American artists have been holed up inside their houses, Lithuanian artists have figured out how to grace the stage again, drive-in concerts. Much like drive-in movies, attendees will tune in via radio waves, and if you end up in a mosh pit, you're going to need body work. That's right, good times ahead, and you can take in those summer shows, virtual or otherwise, with Snoop Dogg Wine, out just in time for summer. Because nothing says you're a gangster G quite like sipping on Zen and Juice. And with that, we would normally turn to this month's hot list with host Alexia Johnson. However, with new COVID-19 restrictions popping up every hour, we have made the executive decision to not be within any distance of anything remotely educational until further notice. Commenting on the hot list on list is Ohio correspondent for no reason, Mike E.P. Mike, how good was Alexia's hot list segment? Extremely good. Well written, mm-hmm. all around enjoyable. It did drag on a little bit though. Great gal. Yes, it lagged. Great gal. Great gal. And her hair is so pretty and shiny, healthy. So pretty. Yeah, and the sets she designed was so nice with the ambiance. And an excellent list of up and coming bands. Such a great segment. So good. It's so. still around though. Yes, uh, no harm, no foul. Still equally important to the viewers. Very important to know who's coming up in the scene. And you can catch it. On YouTube and, and on the Top Shelf site and on Instagram TV or IGTV as the kids say with their lingo. Just not this show. No, that is correct. Not on the show moving forward at all. No. Mm-mm. Sayonara. Great guy. Oh, an awesome person. Such a great girl. Yeah, such an awesome person. Yep. So awesome. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could include more bands on the rise moving forward. Ohio correspondent for no reason, my EP, everybody. Luckily, everything on this show is hot, including myself. It's like a thousand degrees in my house now. Touching on making it work under extreme conditions, these artists have put their all into releasing music over the last month. Reggae rock band Iration has dropped the lead single off their forthcoming album, Coastin'. Yeah, 
We all are, bro. Entitled right here, right now, the track enlists the help of Eric Rachmani of Revolution and Stick Figure, both heavyweights in the reggae rock scene. Because what would Ringo's with a little help from my friends be without Lennon and McCartney picking up the slack? Whoa! Harsh. Over the line. Iration, if you're listening, our sincerest apologies. Christy the Ice Queen clearly needs a timeout. Wait, what? That's better. On the subject of Eric Rockmany, the reggae rock titan side project Unified Highway has dropped a full-length album, Headlines. Here's the headline. If you want a slightly more EDM version of Revolution, you got it. Incubus finally follows up their 2015 project, Trustfall Side A, with the release of Side B after five years. To be honest, if it doesn't come with a time machine to 20 years ago when Incubus was in their prime, we could care less. Or maybe a time machine to two months ago, before everything was trying to kill us. Damn it, Incubus, give us a time machine. Ugh, Ugh that was uncomfortable. Iration, my apologies, that was over the line. We appreciate you, you're a very talented band. Matt, I also noticed that you bashed Brandon Boyd when I was frozen. Whoa. Whoa. Ah, uh, well. Maybe that's just what you and Brandon Boyd needed to hear. Meanwhile, while musicians are struggling to keep themselves afloat, one man is going viral, not coronavirus, just viral, reading Dr. Seuss on top of Dr. Dre beats. And you just can't beat it, feed it, read it, meet it. In a bottle, they call this a Tweedle Beetle Bottle Puddle Paddle Battle. Outstanding. Comedy duo Tenacious D has their new single, Five Needs, describing the needs of existence as being earth, air, water, love, and rock. Whatever you guys are smoking, man, just do it six feet apart, okay? And People are partying, Matt. It's time to start the revolution. And if you want to rave in the house and in the house rave, house artist Duck Sauce has released new music after six years. So why don't you oons, 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 oons on over to Spotify? Not on Spotify, yet available literally everywhere else, is the Twilight Sad's first live EP. More like Spotify Sad. Before you get too emotional over there, Matt, it's time for guests. Time for guests. Joining me in another part of Canada is Rev, frontman of alternative fusion band, Dare Knots. Rev, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you are an ex-man of the cloth, is that correct? Is that why we call you Rev? Uh, ex-man of the cloth, I've never heard it like that, but wow. It might be an American yeah. saying, because you're Canadian, I understand. Um, so let me break it down. You used to be yeah, a reverend, I, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I used, to, uh, I used to go to Bible college to become a reverend, yeah. Yeah, and now you're in a hip-hop band. Slash, uh, yes. Slash uh, alternative band called the Dare Knots. Yes, I am. Okay, so that's a natural path there. That's a spiritual path. Um, so yeah, I, right. as a man, ex man of the cloth, let's go with that. You are under oath pretty much at all times. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I don't lie. I don't yeah, lie. exactly. So you you can decipher what is truth and what is not. Of course. Okay. Yeah, I I would think so. So in your professional uh, reverend opinion, do you believe this is the end of times uh, that's predicted by the pharaohs in the Bible? Oh, wow. Um, no, I think we're okay. Yeah? I think, that, uh, I think we'll make it, you know? Okay. Right now, everybody just have a huge slowdown. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I've seen the mummies so with the pharaohs and the locusts and the death and the, the dying. Oh, you're, the oh, you're saying this is a part of the plague. This is like a pestilence part. I, I think so, yeah. I'm like... Well, what in your professional opinion? What do you think? In my professional opinion, no, I think I think we're good. I think we'll get a vaccine for it. I don't think Bill Gates is going to kill us. Okay, because so the apple yeah. a day keeps the doctor away. I get it. Um, yeah. So what with you know speaking the truth? Apple, that's the wrong company. What? Apple, Microsoft. Technology these days is so advanced. Yeah, who could keep up with what? I constructed a game called Truth or Dare Not. Mm. Are you up for it? Let's go. Okay, um, you would think it's a spin off of Truth or Dare, but it's actually a game of deciphering what is, in fact, fake news and what is not. And, uh, you know, I'm going to read oh, you like some this. headlines, and you okay. respond if it's truth or those guys better dare not. Huh. Okay. okay. I like this, actually. You like it? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to read you only American headlines to make it even harder as a Canadian uh, and for you to understand okay. what exactly we're dealing with and why we're all dead inside. I don't know. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Just you wait. Just you wait. Uh, All right. You ready? Uh, okay, let's go. Let's do this. Okay, here we go. A new multi-trillion dollar stimulus bailout is being prepped for American museums and Broadway plays. Truth or dare, or those guys better dare not. Trillion? 
I mean, I'm going to say dare not. Multi-trillion, four museums, and what's the other one? Broadway Plays. Broadway Plays. I mean, hey, I'd love that, but I don't think they're spending a trillion dollars on that. But actually, they are. Oh. We have absolutely no what? cost. Like, okay. We have no sense of spending in this country. Uh, next, the U.S. is demanding... <laughs> what? <laughs> the U.S. is demanding $6 million for reparations from Asian countries for sticking the murder hornets on us. Oh, wow. <laughs> what did you call them? Murder hornets? <laughs> They're actually murder hornets, yes. That is the real thing. The locusts with the plagues and the pharaohs. We already went over this. Oh, God, yeah. Okay, yeah. Those are the ones that are like this big. They eat the honeybees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So okay. we're asking oh. uh, $6 million of reparations from Asian countries. Oh, wait. That's some pot. What, $6 million flat? Yeah. $6 million for the murder hornets. There's no way that's true. So you're saying those guys better... They're... Those guys that are day not. That is actually false. That is, okay, that is okay. correct that you're false. Moving on. Trump says that the coronavirus is worse than both Pearl Harbor and 9-11. Oh, okay. I would say true. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. A Florida man is warning beachgoers dressed as the Grim Reaper. I think I saw that one. That's true. He's yes. walking around the beaches, yeah. A Pittsburgh pastor called other pastors a bunch of sissies for not honoring Easter and wanted to host the Woodstock of Easter services. What? A pastor wanted to do that? Mm-hmm. Well, I did, mean, he, did he? No, he didn't actually do that. Separation <laughs> of church and state? That is true. He and didn't want to do it? He, did, he actually of, did it? That is, I don't know. I think he might have been charged with terrorism, but separation of church and state. Moving on. Wow. Texas Republican senators got in trouble for having illegal haircuts during the quarantine. Okay, who did? Senators? Texas Republicans, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Texas Republicans got charged. Yeah, got to get the flat tops. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. What, how else would they wear their cowboy hats if it doesn't fit right? Okay. The sound of a toilet flushing was said to be heard during a remote Supreme Court oral argument, causing even more confusion on the case. Okay, so a toilet was flushing? How does that happen? No. It didn't. Or, okay, Someone was multitasking, that is true. Actually, all of these are true, except for the murder hornets, um, because our country is broken and we should start oh. repenting before the rapture comes. Anyways, with that in mind, thank you so much for joining us. Rav of Dare Nuts, everybody. Thank you for having me. Music news is much better anyway. Before we wrap this up, do you have a song that's stuck in your head, Christy? Matt, I'm glad you asked. Two remixes have surfaced during this quarantine time that deserve equal praise. On the one hand, we have Nicki Minaj joining Doja Cat on her number one single, Say So. That's at the top of the charts. And on the other... Beyonce joining Megan Thee Stallion on a Savage remix. It's a hip-hop royalty showdown. Who's to win? Who's to know? All I know is, between the two, I'm leaning towards Queen Bee and Stallion. Because when bees and stallions team up, they might just beat this quarantine. An undeniable combination. So is being classy, bougie, ratchet. Until next month, thanks for tuning in. Good night. I have no idea how to get home. Wonder if uh, I can call like a taxi, Uber service, polar bear sled team. Ooh, dog sleds.